tonight, my God, uh, open the book unto us, O God, cause the book to be open unto us, O God, uh, we decree and declare that the entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple, Father, and we deem ourselves simple until we come unto your word, which alone makes us wise uh, unto your great salvation, we are grateful tonight, Lord, hallelujah, my God, we are grateful tonight to come into your presence, O God, uh, oh, for in your presence is fullness of joy, at your right hand there's our Preko Shinamahaya. There are presents. Hey God! My God, Mahaya. This pleasure is forevermore, God. Yes. The, my God, let the pleasure, Lord God, uh, thank you. of thy grace, O oh God, be granted unto us. Uh, we thank and praise you, Lord God, for everyone who's here tonight. Uh, let that one light leave the same way they have come. Ah, my God, let us all be changed by the power of your word. Uh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to lift your hands just one more time. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for this night that has never been before. Thank you, Lord God, for the truth, Lord God, that we have never heard before. Because every time we come to your table, Lord God, you give us a preceding word, O oh God. Grant us your preceding word, O oh God. Grant us wisdom and understanding of the knowledge of your glory, O oh God. We thank you, Lord God. We approach you, O oh God, with reverence or fear, O oh God, that your word, Lord God, is not a common word. Your word, Lord God, is holy. Your word is holy. Your word is holy. Let the holiness of your word, Lord God, affect change in all of our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. Amen. Amen. gathered in his name to worship him through the teaching and the preaching of his holy word. Amen. 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 Praise God. So glad to see you tonight. My prayer that my, yeah, 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 yeah. my prayer that your day has been exceedingly great. Amen. Even with the challenges. Amen. 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 That God brought us through. Amen. Amen. Hey! My God. Amen. God brought us through. Amen. 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 Thank you, tonight. Jesus. Thank you. I thank God for this lovely Oh my God. Oh my God. We can sit here all night. Praise oh God. God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I'm just happy in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, there is a word from the Lord tonight. Uh, all the other night, the Lord was just speaking to my heart and just connecting some pieces. Amen. With what we've been sharing of understanding kingdom laws, rules, orders, and instructions. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, we, we never come to this table without him feeding us. Mm -hmm. That's so right. Ready to be fed tonight. Yes. Just follow me uh, closely as the Lord leads us tonight. And we'll get to the place where we need to get. Mm -hmm. Look at my time.
time so I won't get lost in that. Well, let me shut up and sit down. Quit me see at the event so I can get started. Praise God. Glad you're here tonight. Praise God. Uh, all the other night, um, the Lord kept uh, you know, giving me uh, this word, the deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin. Praise God. Amen. Uh, here we go. You know, can I have one more notch? Amen. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, as we, oh, yeah, Bill, good to see you, son. As we begin tonight, I want you to turn with me to uh, the Epistle of Hebrews. The Epistle of Hebrews. We'll start there and uh, take our take our journey. And the Epistle of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter three. Amen. And we'll springboard from there, and I'm, I'm going to give you the pieces that the Lord wants you to have tonight. Amen. So, as I sat, I just began to get my pen out and just write. The thing that the Lord wanted me to uh, just share, you may know this, and you know better than me, but I'm going to do my part and uh, serve the meal tonight. Amen. Praise God. We're still uh, talking about understanding kingdom laws, rules, orders, and instructions is all interwoven. And just, just, just get that. You know, God has laws. Yes, he does. God has rules, amen? Yes, he does. God has orders with instructions. Amen. As we looked in Joshua, we, we, we knew he had a law. And uh, he is putting his new man in position to lead the children of Israel uh, into and unto the promised land. A land that flowed with milk and honey. And every new place that the Lord takes us, it comes with new rules, and orders, instructions uh, to, to guide us uh, to where he wants to take us. Amen? Amen. And so tonight, uh, I, I want this thought to be in your mind is the deceitfulness of sin. And that's the basis, but we'll give you the pieces that connects this. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Uh, Hebrews chapter Three, we're looking, my God, I feel the presence of God, y'all. The Bible says where two or three are summoned together, there he is in the midst of us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, this is not a common book. This is the book of life. And it gives life. Amen? Yes, Amen. Yes. Hebrews chapter 3. We're looking at verse uh 12 and 13. Verse 12 and 13. Uh, 1 and 2, let's read. Take heed, brethren. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, let me get to 2. All right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to read together. Praise God. We're in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. 1 and 2, let's read. Take, Take heed, heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Amen. Let's read it one more time. Verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily. Hold up. But exhort one another daily. Uh, that means you've got to keep focused. And we all must keep focused, amen, unto the success of the life of our brother and sister. Amen? And that's important. Praise God. That i got to be concerned about you. You must be concerned about me. How often? Daily. Amen. And in the Hebrew writer saying, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you can be any one of us be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. 
Praise God. And so all, all during a, a period of time, it kept coming up to me, kept coming up to, up to me. The deceitfulness of sin, the deceitfulness of sin. So let's take our journey as we get the instructions of the Lord. To he, brethren, lest there be in any of you, any of us, mm -hmm. apostle, prophet, Baptist, pastor, teacher, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, an evil heart of unbelief. I want to take that word, un unbelief. Uh, unbelief are those who do not believe. They know, but disobey. So it becomes sin. Again, the word unbelief are those who do not believe, but they know, but disobey. So it becomes sin. Disobey is your subjective unwillingness. <laughs> I said, Lord, you're saying something. To, to, to disbelieve is your or my subjective unwillingness. Say subjective unwillingness. Subjective unwillingness. Subjective is based on personal opinion amid feelings rather than on the facts. Or it's influenced by or based on personal beliefs or feelings and not on truth or facts. So when we talk about, you know, uh, disbelief, it is your subjective unwillingness to believe. You choose by your feelings. You choose by your personal beliefs or your personal opinions. Watch out for your post personal beliefs, your personal un opinions. So when we talk about unbelief, we're talking about those who do not believe though they know. They do not believe though they know. Look at Hebrews 3 with me for a moment. Verse 12 again. Read with me. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So he, he's saying here that there is a uh, capability of you departing. And so you're not held to what you believe. We both hold on to what we believe, but uh, he, he gives us a, a caution here. Uh, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil, evil, what? Heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So he had a, a thought there that there can be a departing from the living God. He didn't say dead God, a living God. And so uh, we, we must be cautious, amen, that there, there are some powers out there, there's some evil uh, uh, forces out there can cause you or I to take a thought of departing from the living God. But he says, verse 13 says, but exhort one another daily while it is called today. Read, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our what? Confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, today if ye will what? Hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. Listen carefully. But with whom was he grieved? Forty years. Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? But to them that believe not. They knew. All right. They knew, right? But they chose to believe not. They chose to believe not. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that what? Believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of because of Unbelief. they lost reverence they lost reverence of the living word of God 
or the living God. They lost reverence and respect to his word. That's very important because the deceitfulness of sin will do that. I'm going to define that in a minute, but I want to get this word unbelief out. Amen. So we, we don't walk in a place of unbelief. Praise God. Uh, not that we don't know, but uh, there's this uh, trickery, of, trick, trickery of the devil would try to persuade us not to continue to believe what we know. And we make excuses. Amen. But we don't need excuses in these latter days. Praise God. Uh, and so the scripture says, uh, uh, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin. Unbelief is you don't believe. Or you chose not to believe. That God is good. Therefore, you do the things which he tells you not to do. So we're talking about uh, the unbelief or uh, uh, disbelieving God. Unbelief is you don't believe or you choose not to continue to believe that God is good. Therefore, you do the things which he tells you not to do. Hmm. Now listen carefully. Sin is said to possess the qualities of deceitfulness. Listen here. Sin is said to possess the qualities of deceitfulness. This implies that it doesn't deliver on the promises it makes to you. Listen carefully. Sin is said to possess the quality of deceitfulness. Sin promises you things, it implies that it's going to deliver to you on those promises. But in other words, it deceives you. <laughs> it entices you to believe the lie. That's it. Uh, it entices you to believe the lie. Makes it look believable. And there's a reason why. Because there's an element in us called covetousness. There's something called covetousness that's in us that causes us to believe the lie, which is a sin. Again, sin is said to possess the quality of deceitfulness. Again, this implies that it doesn't deliver on the promises it makes to you or me. Listen carefully. Sin presents the superficial pictures of evil to appear good while admit to destroy the acceptor or the person of oneself. We're teaching tonight. Mm -hmm. I said we're teaching tonight. Mm -hmm. Sin presents the superficial pictures of evil to appear good. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what sin does? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gives you pictures that this is good. When God says it's evil. Mm -hmm. But because of the covetousness in our mind, we go along with the pictures, the illusions of it being good, but it's going to kill you. It's going to destroy your very life. My God. It's called the deceitfulness of sin. Sin promises things that it really can't deliver. But only give you superficial pictures of the evil. It makes it seem like it's going to be good, but it appears good, but it's really evil. Mm -hmm. But admit it's there to destroy the person, destroy oneself. Can I buy amen? Amen. amen. It, lets you say, it lets you forget that 
God is good and he's not evil, but it's saying that this sin is good. This picture is good because of something that you want. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Now, let's go a little bit further. The question, what is sin, sin's deceitfulness? What is sin's deceitfulness? It's to mislead. Say mislead. Mislead. Sin's deceitfulness is to mislead. There's a guy named Lloyd Jones explains four ways in which sin deceives. Number one, it makes one feel that God is against them. Mm -hmm. Number one, he does what? Makes one feel that God is against them. Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter three. We're talking about the deceitfulness of sin. What is sin's deceitfulness? Number one, it makes one feel that God is against him or her. Genesis chapter 3. You have to say it back. Amen. Verse 1 says what? Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Right? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And to God's word. Mm -hmm. And the serpent said, or the lie said, or the liar said. And the serpent said unto the woman, what did he say unto the woman? He shall not. And that's a lie. That's a lie. In the face of the truth. In the face of a thing that's working on the inside of you or me and wanting something that God says that we could not have or wanting something that's not yours. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And the serpent said, verse 4, and the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Knowing good and evil. So, the sin of deceitfulness, it makes one feel that God is against them, or God don't want them back have something that they believe that should be theirs. Mm -hmm. Are you catching that? Mm -hmm. It makes one feel. That's why she kept talking to the devil. The devil kept talking to her. Let me see if I can get her to get into her feelings. Huh? Put a seed there. All the time. To go against the spirit of truth. And to lay hold of flesh. What I want, what I got to have. Right. Hmm? And so sin is deceitful. Huh? It camouflages. Mm -hmm. huh? It makes itself appear huh? that you deserve this when you don't deserve that which God has not given. That's right. And so the scripture says. And verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, 
and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband. He did. He did. He, he got deceived. Yep. Just like his wife got deceived. So number one, one point to explain how sin is deceitful. Number two, it makes them feel that the law of God is unreasonable in its demands. One of the sins is deceitfulness. Number one, it makes one feel that God is against them. God don't want you to have what you want. Number two, it says it makes them feel. The sin of deceitfulness makes one feel that the law of God is unreasonable. Hmm? Did you think that? Mm -hmm. Come on. Didn't they think that? Yeah. That, that you know, somebody convinced them because they listened to another voice. Yep. You gotta be careful with the voices that you listen to. They can talk you out of what God has said. Mm. And so it makes them feel that the law of God is unreasonable. Why? Why, God? Why are you keeping me from uh, uh, this tree? Huh? Why are you holding this from me? Huh? Uh, your answer. Your answer. Come on. Why? Why is God keeping that from you? Come on, give me an answer from somebody. Why is God keeping this from me? You know, that, that's what he was saying. Why is God keeping it from me? Tracy, why is God keeping this from me? He's not. Yes, he, he said he can't have the tree. Why is he keeping it from me? Protection. Yes. Oh. Did you hold up one? What do you say? Protection. He said protection. What do you say over here? He don't want you to die. What else? Love. To keep you from sin. Love. What? Keep you from sin. Why? It belongs to him. Hey, there it is. Ooh, the apostle got it. Because... It belonged to him. Amen. That's why. It's mine. If I don't want you to have it, it's mine. Mm -hmm. huh? hey, bottom line, I wasn't trying to trick you, none, but all those thoughts are good because it, it speaks that. Uh, what did you say over here? Protection. 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 I need to protect you, amen, because I know what's in the midst of that tree. Mm -hmm. So I need to protect you until you learn a little bit more about who I am. And what that tree, you know, can do to you. Amen. So I'm protecting you. Who else said something? He must say, you don't die. So he said, you don't, it won't die. Yeah. Yeah, because he said, you eat it, you're going to what? Surely die. Surely die. die. So all the same, if, if, if God says something, amen, and he says, uh, don't, amen, because he's already given you the understanding of why he says, don't. Because I don't want you to die. Mm -hmm. I want to protect you. Because you can't handle that tree right now. Amen. It's got knowledge that you're not even come to that level right now. So you can't handle it. So I, I, I got to uh, wait till a time that I can uh, share it with you. Amen. Because, you know, you don't teach uh, children you know, uh, things that's too high for them. Amen. amen. You wait till they're at a level that they can understand. Amen. And be able to handle that truth. Amen. That's at their level. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to this tonight? Praise God. But, but here, as we understand, there, sin has a deceitfulness about it. Amen. Uh, Hebrews uh, uh, 3 and 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. There was an evil heart of unbelief, amen, propagated to Eve mm -hmm. and fell on Adam. Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, there, there, there was a, there's a word sent out, amen, that was coming against them. Uh, and it was coming against them uh, to, to cause them to depart mm -hmm. from the living God. Mm -hmm. Anytime there's a word come contrary to what God says, it's to cause you to depart from the living God that you love. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And they will be glad to have you on his side. If you can, my God, if you go see the Mahaya, he never go see. If you can go see the Mahaya, if you can be go see the Mahaya, if you can go see, my God, if you can be go see the Mahaya, he can be go see the Oshaya. Get you to believe a lie. He can, he can get you. He can get you, huh? And only truth make you free. That's it. And so as we understand, number three, number three, 
uh, uh, the writer explains four ways uh, in which sin deceive. It makes one feel that God is against them. Number two, it makes them feel that the law of God is unreasonable in its demands. Why can't I have it? Hmm? I want it, God. Why can't I have it? Hmm? Why are you keeping it from me? It makes them feel that the law of God or what God has said is unreasonable in its demands. Number three, hmm, it, it, it praises, oh my, are you ready for this? The deceitfulness of sin. Mm -hmm. It praises the sinner and makes them think more highly than themselves. Huh? What is a sin deceitfulness? It praises the sinner. Sin praises the sinner. Sin praises the sinner, Elfield. Because the sinner going to get what they want. And the sin wants you to get what you want and reject God. So the deceitfulness of sin, it praises the sinner and makes them think more highly of themselves. It makes them what? Think. Think more highly of themselves. Not more highly of God, but of themselves. I'm somebody. It's my thing. I can do what I want to do. Not in the economy of God. This is not man's world. This is God's world. Huh? This is God's world. And so God makes up the rules. He, he established the laws. He established the order, amen, for all mankind. And the world thinks that it can do what it wants to do. That's why the world is falling apart. That's why we're having all types of storms and hurricanes and floods and, my God, and, and 10 feet of snow, my God, within two or three days. Come on, 12 feet of snow in, in a few days. And it's, non, it's, it's still ongoing. Praise God. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Landslides. Earthquakes that are more profuse in this latter hour. Mm -hmm. hmm. So, number four, what is sin's deceitful, deceitfulness? And the fourth, which is, listen carefully, this is, this is good. Uh, and it even deceives about sin itself. Mm. <coughs> it does what? It even deceives about sin itself. Hmm, no. Hardened by the sin, sins of deceitfulness. I'm, I'm getting to that right now. Hardened by the sins of deceitfulness. Say the sins of deceitfulness. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 3 and 13 says, But exhort, warn one another daily while it is called today. Lest any of you be hardened. Say hardened. Hardened, hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. There's a hardening through the deceitfulness of sin. The hardening, the hardening by sin's deceitfulness, listen carefully, means this. The deceitfulness of sin creates in the mind a tendency to do evil. Mm -hmm. I understand why God gave this bill now. <laughs> I just begin to write. So I'm going to sit down in my office and begin to write. I'm going to see what God's going to say with all this. <laughs> Hardening by sin's deceitfulness means the deceitfulness of sin creates in the mind a tendency to do evil. <laughs> the deceitfulness of sin creates in the mind a tendency to do evil because it's deceitful. Mm -hmm. Listen to the logic. Because others have done so. Because others have done so, meaning I can do it too. Mm -hmm. They got away with it. Mm -hmm. So I can too. 
we have heard and known people so eager to excuse sin that they cry. Look at David. Look at Solomon. Look at Samson. Look at the preachers. Just say it right now. Look at the preachers now then. As here we go. As if the faults of others were an excuse before God for themselves to get a pass. Can I say that again? As if the faults of others or your brother were an excuse before God for themselves to get a pass. They made it out. I can make it out. They living good and not going to church and not paying their tithe. They living good, amen, and they ain't sick. The deceitfulness of sin. Because you got a few nickels that you can rub together don't mean that you're right with God. Because you've got good health don't mean that you're right with God. Because you lived a long life don't mean that you're right with God. Ecclesiastes, I believe I, I want to go there. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Glory to God. My God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the hammer ain't came down, don't mean it ain't going to come down. That's right. Huh? I'll say it again. Because the hammer ain't came down upon you, don't mean that it ain't going to come down upon you. God has just been merciful to you. Come on. He's just been a faithful God. Amen. To give you time. Praise God. Yes. Like he gave the folk in Noah's. He gave them time. Gave them 120 years to get it straight. Mm -hmm. Now I mean the hammer wasn't coming down. Yes. Right. right. Hallelujah. Mercy. The deceitfulness of sin. Mm -hmm. You have uh, Ecclesiastes 8? Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the word of the Lord and Let's look at uh, verse verse 11. This is a good verse. Praise God. You have to say amen. amen. Why don't you let's read? It says what? Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Stop right there. Come on. You got to get that. Amen. Because sin hasn't paid you wages yet. <laughs> You better thank God it ain't paid wages yet. You got time to repent. You got time to get right. You got time to come to the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, we give you praise. Amen. Verse 11 again. Let's read. It says, because uh, because sentence against what? Evil work. work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Because they think that they got by. They think that ain't no judgment coming. They think that, hey, uh, uh, I'm bad, amen. You know, I'm this, I'm that. Praise God. No, 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 no. And verse 12 is important. It says what? Uh, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Did you get that? He said, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his day, which are as a what? Shadow, because he feareth not before God, but it shall not be well. He says, shall not be well. Though it looks like it has been well for a long period of time, though me is going to continue to be well with that evil, wicked person. That's right. God has a day. He has a time set. Praise God. Yes, he does. And he'll deal with every man according to his works, according to his deeds. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Are we listening? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, there is four ways in which sin deceives. 
Number one, again, it makes one feel that God is against them because you can't have what you want at this present time. Two, it makes them feel that the law of God is unreasonable in its demand. I want to have three wives. I want to have three husbands. Amen. Amen. I, I, want, I want to have sex whenever I want to have a sex, and I don't want to get married. God put too hard of a demand on me. Huh? And so that's, that's another deception of how people are deceived. It makes them feel that the law of God is unreasonable. It is demand. Well, it, it, it is God's world. Yes. <laughs> it's God's law. Yes. And he owns you and he owns me. Yes, he does. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. So everything yes. is his. The earth is the Lord. Thank and you. the fullness thereof. And the world yes. and everything Hallelujah. in it. Thanks. And so we have come to a place, amen, as humans, that yes, we think yes. we can do what we want to, mm -hmm. when we want to, how much we want to do wrong. of it. Yes. Not. Not. Wrong. Not. Not. And then the third, it praises the sinner and makes them feel, this is the deceitfulness of sin, it makes them think more highly of themselves uh, uh, than they ought to. Mm -hmm. Hmm? And it even deceives about sin itself. No. Hardness by sin's deceitfulness. I'm going to read this again. The deceitfulness of sin again creates in the mind a tendency to do evil. Because others have done so. And we think they got away with it. And we think they got away with it. And they're doing good. They're living lavish lives. Hmm? They have three and four luxury cars. Hmm? They have a house on the beach. Praise God. And so they're doing well. Huh? And they think it's unreasonable. And God's unreasonable in his demands on my life. Three, it praises the sinner and makes them think more highly of themselves. Four, and it even deceives about sin itself. So the hardened by sin's deceitfulness uh, creates in the mind a tendency again to do evil. A tendency to do what? Evil. Why? Because others have done so. We have heard and known people so eager to excuse sin that they cry, look at David, look at Samson, look at Solomon, look at these preachers of our day. Again, as if the faults of others is God's guideline in dealing with sin. And wickedness. No. God ain't going to judge you by this one or that one. God's going to judge all of us by the word of truth. Amen. By his laws, by his rules, by his orders that he's made real to you. That he's made real to me. Amen. Praise God. That's why, now, let us just recapture this. Uh, Hebrews 13, but it says, but exhort one another daily. That's why we exhort one another daily. Say daily. 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 Exhort means this, and I know you know it, but I, I need to throw it at you again because we need this in the last days. Exhort means to strongly encourage or urge someone. Strongly what? Encourage or urge someone to be at their best or to do that which is right or to do or not to do something that God says 
to do or not to do. That's exhort means. Exhort means what? To exhort one another daily. Exhort meaning to strongly encourage or to urge someone. Amen. To urge someone. Have you ever urged someone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come worship? Why don't you come to the Bible study with me tonight? Huh? Uh, why don't you try the Lord out? Praise God. Uh, we exhort people. We urge people. Amen. To give their life to the Lord. Amen. We urge, praise God, people to do right. Praise God. We urge people not to get involved, amen, with illicit drugs, amen, to get involved, amen, with, uh, you know, sexual activities, amen. We, we urge, amen, don't do that. You, you destroy your soul, amen. You take on many soul ties and, yes. you know, confuse your mind, praise God. Mm -hmm. When you thought it was love, it just was lust, mm -hmm. the lust of the flesh, the lust right. of the eyes, praise God. Then their mind's all tangled out, amen, and tangled up, amen, because you thought it was love. Mm -hmm. That person just wanted a good time. Yep. And they left you hanging, they left you strung out in your emotions. Yes, Lord. Because yeah. you've done something that was illegal, amen. amen. Yeah. And you didn't know the price that you would pay, yeah. amen, for a soul tie, amen. Mm -hmm. Someone that really didn't love you. They just loved the parts of you. What a downfall. I said, what a downfall. That's called the deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin. Oh, yeah, he's handsome. He's debonair. And she's pretty. She's cute. Amen. She's all that in the bag of chips. Amen. Uh, she got you going in circles. Amen. But she'll, got, she'll get you going to hell. He'll get you going to hell. Amen. In a handbasket. You can't even count to three. One, five. One, six. But you thought it was good. Amen. The deceitfulness of sin. You see something looks good. Because it looks good don't mean it is good. Right. It looks like gold. It may be brass. Amen. Uh, yeah. You sold your soul for brass. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking about, uh, uh, I think, uh, the mother, a mother of the church of God in Christ, amen, was given a uh, testimony, amen, how she was in the grocery store, amen, and uh, uh, she, she got a couple of things, amen, and uh, some man was following around the store, amen, and uh, she got to register, and uh, he wanted to be nice, so he, uh, he attended to be a deceitfulness, amen, he, he bought her groceries, amen, and she didn't ask him to buy them, amen, but uh, uh, he wanted to buy her groceries, and he bought her groceries, amen, praise God, what did she buy? Uh, yeah. I think she bought, well, it was a, a pack of toilet paper, amen, a four-pack of toilet paper, amen, and he paid for it, praise God. Got, got out in the parking lot, amen, and uh, he followed her in the parking lot, amen, and, and she said, hey, uh, hey, 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 uh, uh, can, 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 we, can we get together? He said, what's wrong with you? You think I'm going to sell my soap for a pack of toilet paper? <laughs> Got me on my soul ain't that cheap. <laughs> what, pack of toilet paper? Get out of my face. What's the matter with you? <laughs> I laughed. He goes, Are you right? I'm going to sell my soul and go to hell for a pack of toilet paper. <laughs> you must be mad. My God. Uh, and, 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 and that's what's happening right now. Who are selling a soul for a pack of this or a pack of that for, you know, huh? They're selling soul for an inanimate object, amen, because somebody wants to buy them this, uh, buy them that, amen. And they think, amen, they're in love, amen. That's not love. That's called the deceitfulness of sin. That's why the apostles say, but exhort one another daily, exhorting me uh, with strong, uh, strongly encourage, uh, urge someone, uh, uh, be at your best, amen? Yes, Lord. Be at your best, to be your best. Yes. When you exhort, you, you exhort someone to, to not to do this, it, it will harm you, uh, to do this, it will help you, amen? Exhort, that's what it means, it means also to warn. To give warning or advice, uh, to make to make an urgent appeal, to make what an urgent appeal, amen. This this, this won't fare fare good for you. Don't don't do this. It won't fare good for you. Mm -hmm. it, it won't turn out well. 
I said, it won't turn out well. Hmm. Praise God. And again, as we're looking, looking at this, and sin is said to possess the quality of deceitfulness. This implies that it doesn't deliver on the promises, promises it makes to you. tells you he loves you. Amen. He said, I want to take care of you. And he takes you in his nice uh, uh, apartment, praise God. Puts you up, amen. Praise God. Amen. And he promised you he's going to marry you, but he's seven years in and he still ain't married you. Amen. And then in the eighth year, he, he, he finds a bathing beauty, amen, and drops you like yesterday's news because the promise is over, amen. Amen. So your eyes are open, amen. You ain't going to never marry him. No, and today I was going to marry you. Yeah. Well, you, you, you. You implied your words, well, I lied. Praise God. That's what they do. And so he went out and got a new model after seven years of your wasted life. Yeah. Hey! My God, the deceitfulness of sin because. He, he, he persuaded you if you give up your morals, if you give up your standards, uh, if you give me give me this, amen, I, I'll give you that. Then you wind up holding the bag with holes in it. Are you listening? The sequelness of sin. Come on, say that three times. The sequelness of sin. It promised you everything, but gives you nothing but a bag filled with holes. And the writer says of Hebrews 3 and 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. sin. Hmm. Praise God. Let's go to Joshua. I got a, uh, a few more minutes. Time just flies when you're having a good time. Are you getting something tonight? Yes. Mm -hmm. What I say about sin, uh, it, it promises, it promises you a lot. <laughs> sin presents superficial pictures uh, of evil to appear, appear what good. Well, admit it is in process of destroying your life. You have Joshua chapter uh, six. Amen. I just want to take a piece of this. Amen. My, why did time go so fast? My goodness, my God. I'm, 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 I'm mad now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't be deceived. There's, there's another time, right? Amen. Thank you, Phil. There's another time. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, you have uh, six, 6 and 15. Come on. Read. 6 and 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. This is awesome, isn't it? So in this sixth chapter, it talks about laws, rules, orders, and instructions, amen? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. To bring down the enemy and his power, right? Right. All they had to do is follow the instructions of the Lord. Praise God. Right. And that wall did fall, amen. Oh, yes. At the seventh time, they shouted, amen, with a great shout, amen. And the walls of Jericho came falling down by the power of God. Now, they didn't do it, amen, because they obeyed God. Right. Because they follow instructions, amen. And say, obedient to the word of the Lord, amen. Those walls came down. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. I encourage you to stay obedient to what God has said, amen. And watch the walls come down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Now, verse 17 says this. And the city shall be what? A curse. 
But read it. And the city shall be a curse, even it, and all that are therein to the Lord. To who? The Lord. The Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Praise God. 18. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves. What? Who self? Say myself. Myself. Oh, my God. You got to keep yourself. If nobody else keep themselves, you keep yourself. That's right. Praise God. He's talking to everybody, but you got to keep yourself. That's right. Oh, if everybody else don't keep themselves, I got to keep myself. Hallelujah. My God, he give you praise. And ye, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. Lest you make yourselves accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and, and, and trouble it. When you take that which does not belong to you, you bring a curse upon yourself. That's right. You bring trouble upon yourself. Are you listening? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Listen to the word of the Lord. Praise God. Mm -mm -mm. Chapter 7. I just want to get this last piece out because I got about uh, oh, one minute. Praise God. <laughs> but I got to get this one piece because it's, it's dealing with the deceitfulness of sin. Praise God. Uh, everything in Jericho was God's. Mm -hmm. Everything about Jericho belonged to who? God. Belonged to the Lord our God. Amen? Mm -hmm. He owns it now. And everything belongs to him. Yes, and right. what he said to be taken out from it goes into the Lord's treasury. Right. So it's the right. Lord's treasury. Nobody else is but the Lord's treasury. Right. Amen? Are you listening? It belongs to him. Right. Praise God. Uh, chapter 7. Quickly. Praise God. Verse 16. Uh, can I buy two minutes? I just need two minutes. Can I buy two minutes, Debbie, for me? Thank you. Debbie, sold me two minutes. Two dollars. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, for, <laughs> I'm going to buy two minutes for Angela, too. For, no, I ain't my king. I'm going to take my two minutes. Verse 16. You have it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Say after me the deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of, sin. of sin. What is the deceitfulness of sin? Somebody. Anybody. Take your time. What is the deceitfulness of sin? Make one feel that God is against them. Make them what? Oh. Makes one feel that God is against them. Okay, what else? Unbelief. Unbelief. Deceitful sin is unbelief. So what does that mean? Subjective, subjective unwillingness. Not to believe what God said. That's the deceitfulness of sin. Not believe what God said. He didn't mean it. He ain't talking to me. He's talking to Sandra. <laughs> he's talking to Angela. He, he's talking to all of us, right? Right. The seabolness of sin is that he's talking to all y'all. He ain't talking to me. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. All right. Yeah. So here, verse 16, read. So Joshua wanted to read. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerahites, and he brought them, the family of the Zerahites, man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household, man by man. See how accurate God is? I said, see how accurate God is? And he brought his, oh, where are we at? 18? 18. And he brought his household, man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmine, the son of Zabdi, the son of Mazerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him. And tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua. Now listen carefully. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord. Right, yeah. I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And thus, and thus have I done. He spilled his guts. Verse 21. When I saw among the spoils of, of a goodly Babylonian's garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, 
Then I, then I took it and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. Then I covered. Yes. His word. Then I covered the deceitfulness of sin. Huh? The deceitfulness of sin. He coveted. He greatly desired or envied something that did not belong to him. He got greedy for gain. He craved after something that God already said that you could not have. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Hey, my God. He went after something that belonged to somebody else. Yeah. Right. Huh? The deceitfulness of sin said, I can have what God said I couldn't have. Even if God said it, I'm bigger than God. I can hide it from the God of all earth who sees everything. Whose eyes go to and forth throughout the whole earth, uh, beholding <laughs> the good and the evil. Praise God. His eyes are in every place, the scripture says. And so I didn't see it. Yes, he did see it. Praise God. But sin said he couldn't see me. Now, 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 then you can't find me. You can't see me. But in his mind, Sin said, to possess the qualities of deceitfulness. And this implies that it doesn't deliver on the promises it makes to you. Sin presents the superficial pictures of evil. Mm -hmm. But it says it's good. I'm going to take what belongs to God. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> I'm going to take it because it's mine. Mm -hmm. So the last one you said was deceitful. Does that mean his mind was deceitful of itself? Deceiving him to think that he'd right. be able to hide whatever from God and get away with it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's insanity. Mm -hmm. But that's what he said. So I'll stop there. I'll stop right there. Because here it is. Verse 21 says what? When I saw mm -hmm. among the spoils of goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I covered them. You know what? I coveted them. Coveted them. And I took, took them. them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in, in the, the midst, midst of my tent. tent. And the silver under it. First Timothy. And then we'll say amen. First Timothy, chapter 6. First Timothy. The law was, and the rules were, that everything in the city belonged to who? God. God. Especially all the silver, mm -hmm. all the gold, oh, all the said. iron, all the brass, right? That's what he said. Yeah, you can have the garment, he didn't say that, but still, the whole city belongs to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, First Timothy chapter six. Six. Right. Mm -hmm. Verse number. You have verse number six. You have it? Yeah. Read. But, but godliness with contentment is, is great gain. gain. What did he didn't have? What did Achan have? Contentment. 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 Oh, contentment. He was godly, but he lost it. Right. The things he had. He what? He wasn't content with such things that he had. He wasn't content of such things that he had. And he wanted God's stuff. Or your stuff. Yeah. Amen. So we have here, but godliness with contentment 
is great gain. If he were to say content with what God has said, right. he would have had great gain. He would have been able to continue and prosper in life. Right. Amen. And then got him some, his own gold, right. got his own silver, yeah. Yeah. got his own garments. Right. Praise God. If he would say content, amen, and being godly towards God. Praise God. Verse 7. For, come on, for we brought nothing into this world. He says, you didn't bring nothing into Jericho. And he said, you couldn't take that now. So why do you take it now? Right. Are you listening? Praise God. Amen. Let's read the word. Praise God. Read. Uh, we, well, we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Praise God. And having food and raiment, let, let us be there, be there with content. Yes. Praise God. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. He wanted to be rich. He wanted something that didn't belong to him and didn't want to work for it for himself. Amen. Right. Are you listening? He wanted something free. It ain't nothing free. I said, ain't nothing for you pay for everything you get. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be what? Content. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. And what? Destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. It's nothing wrong with money. Uh, but the love it and want to be greedy after it huh, is the what? The root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, like he did, what did he do? He coveted after. He, what did he do? He coveted after. Amen. They that have and they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Follow after that. Faith, follow after faith. Follow after love. Follow after meekness. Don't follow after covetousness. Because it brings what? Destruction. It brings what? Destruction and perdition. And perdition. Damnation. Uh -huh. That's what happened with Achan. Destruction came. But not only to himself. You can bring destruction not only to yourself, but destruction to those around you. Those who admire you. Who respect you. You can cause them to go down with you. Because they, they will see yes. what you do. Yes. And if you can do it, I can do it. Yes. If it's all right with you, then it's all right with me. So is that all right? Amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord wants to have tonight. The deceitfulness of sin. Mm -hmm. The deceitfulness of sin creates in the mind a tendency to do evil. Because others have done so. Mm -hmm. And got away with it. You think. So I can get away with it. No. The Bible still says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life to them Questions before we leave this house. Any questions? Any statements, thoughts? Anybody? Raise your hands. Hallelujah. Father, our hands are raised unto you tonight, and we thank you for allowing us to enter into the revelation, the understanding of thy word, even tonight. Our hearts has been guided and directed to understand a portion of the deceitfulness 
of sin while it promises us superficial blessings that can never be apprehended. Thank you for allowing us to see that your word is right and sin is wrong. We humble our help, oh my God. We humble our hearts to embrace this word tonight and to exhort one another while it is day and daily exhort one another to be steadfast and unmovable and maintaining the cause of spirit and truth you said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God shall man live Grant this people a perceiving word tonight as they lie down upon the bed to regurgitate, Lord God, to turn over, Lord God, to re-examine what you allowed us to share tonight. We may have missed something, but Lord, let them find what your servant missed that they may put all the pieces together and not be deceived through the deceitfulness of sin the lust of other things. Thank you, Father, for this night. Bless this Thank people. You, Lord. Travel in mercy, Lord God, by the angels. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands. Give God praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for those extra few minutes. Amen.